fire it, I need some head plate material. So I'm going to take this chunk of walnut and I'm going to make some head plate material with it. It's just an old chunk of black walnut tree uh, that I got years ago from a friend. I have several random chunks of it laying out back. What I need to do is take a plane and flatten the surfaces here and then square them up so that I can cut a thin head plate material from it. So this is just rough hogging material until I get it where I want it. I'll take a, a straight edge and check progress as I go along. Once I get that one surface as flat as I can then I'll flip it on its side on the vise and work on one side of it to flatten it out and level it and make it square to the other flat side the face that I just got done working that's not really critical as long as both sides both faces are flat cutting a thin piece of material out of it would not really make a difference whether the edges were exactly square because I'm going to glue it onto the face of the headstock and those pieces would be cut away anyway but if you're going to do it you just as well square it up and do it right and here I am back in the front face again and it's just ba bouncing back and forth working on both of those faces until they are square to one another and I'm checking the length of it and I'm just gonna now that I've got two surfaces that are square to one another then I'll take a knife or some type of marking tool and mark it for length and then cut it as square as I can check that for square and adjust and then I flip it over and start on the other face or the other facing side whatever you want to call it to flatten that out and square it just like I did the other side now I could buy head plate material and as you see when I go along I'll use a piece of material that I got that's a scrap that's head plate material that I had laying around but uh, I've got this here I really don't want to order just a couple of pieces of head plate material from off the internet it's a waste of time to order for that little bit of money and all of that so I've got this here I have the tools, I have the skill, it's not a big deal. So now you see I cut that out on my table saw. I just set the fence and cut that really thin. I think it was like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch or something like that. I can't, I believe it's a sixteenth or three thirty-second, something like that. 
but don't quote me on it. But I'm just attaching double stick tape so that I can flip it over and hold it down on this flat board here so I can work it and bring it down to the thickness that I need and make sure that thickness is even across the width and length of the piece. And I'm shooting for the same thickness as that head plate material scrap that I told you I had, which is going to be a part of this. I'm not just going to use one piece of wood for the head plate. So I'll start out with a plain set to take fairly thin shavings. And then I finish up with a scraper. And I will go to a, a palm sander. I don't think I have that in this video. But I did use, once I got it scraped down where everything was the right thickness, the same thickness, and, and all of that, then I went and smoothed everything out with high grit sandpaper in a palm sander. If you look carefully, I got checks and stuff at the end. Those won't matter either because I made the piece long enough that they'll, they'll be cut off. Now here's that scrap of head plate material that I had left. Actually, this is uh, not head plate material. Excuse me. This is side material or back material. You can see uh, the uh, shape of the back cut out part of it. That's what this is. Uh, this is the... Uh, remnants of back material for the guitar that I'm making. So I'm going to use that in the center. We'll have this in the center and wall, black wall out on both sides. So this is Sapili. And I'm taking this bevel angle or whatever you call that. That's what I would call it. Uh, and just come up with an angle that I like that I think will look good. I'm not doing any measurements, seeing what that angle is or anything like that. I'm just using this bevel, sliding bevel I think is what it's called. To have the same kind of angle on both sides of this piece. This piece will go down the center of a head plate. Just so I can, you know, do something a little bit different. And then it's a matter of cutting it out. Cut it square across the top. Little Harbor Freight saw. 
You can knock it all you want. This saw's been good to me. It's good and sharp, and I can cut well with it. So there we go. I'm going to lay it on this piece of walnut and size it up. And now what we're going to do is I'm using a, that piece off of my combination square and this flat board with paper, sandpaper on it to keep the edge square. And I'm just flattening that out from where I cut it so that it's nice and flat and straight. Yes, you can do this with band saws and uh, power tools and stuff like that. I just, I use hand tools more than I do anything else. They're a lot quieter, they're a lot less dangerous, uh, they're much more fun. So, your mileage may vary. Now what I'm going to do is mark for the cut. it out. Just look at it, see what it looks like, and I'll square it off just like I did that centerpiece. And then I'll measure to make sure that I'm going to have enough width. And mark for the cut, same as before, and cut her out. Now I'll straighten the edge on that the same way I've been doing the others with that block, that sanding block, and that piece off the combination square. So we've moved inside and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this basically the same way that I joined the top and the back. I've uh, put this in there in such a way that there's a board underneath the center that raises them up so that when I pull that board out and close the gap it puts clamping pressure because it's actually shorter than what it would be if you laid it in there flat. It's like making a tent and then pulling the center out 
from the middle of the tent. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. You see how it's, I'm lifting it up and tinting it, and now what I'll do, once I get it right, I got it's fumbly, and I think I'm going to end up having to add a little bit more glue and all of that, but you'll get the idea. And if you watched my uh, top and back joining video, you should already know. Very simple concept, but it works really well. And pull that piece out and press down. You see how it locked in? And what I'll do is I'll clean that off and make sure everything's nice and even and flat. One of the edges not sticking up higher than the other. That kind of deal. And then I'll put that piece of paper in the center to cover the glue seam. And I'll put this piece of wood down to use as a clamping call and clamp both ends of it until it dries. And I'll do the same for the other piece that goes on the other side. Uh, and you will see the finished product when I get ready to glue it to the headstock. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.